Um, today is a special day in the fact that it's election day, um, and so we're going to start off. I'll do the recording notice, and then we'll get right into the elections. And then we're going to go into closed session because we've been blessed with Mr. Inglis's presence today, and so we want to make sure we get through all the closed stuff. And then we'll go back into regular session. Okay. Probably the easiest way to do things. So, board member, staff, guests, and members of the public are reminded that the full authority board committee meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the authority's website along with the official written minutes. As such, comments and opinions expressed may be published, and any comments expressed by individual board members, guests, and the general public are their own and do not represent the opinions or comments of the full authority and or the KCCA Board of Directors. The recorded video of the full authority meeting is not considered the official record of that meeting. The official record of the full authority meeting shall consist solely of the minutes approved by the full authority. And with that in mind, we will turn to Elizabeth, or do I run the election? No, you do not run the election. <laughs> That's not fair. It seems like a perfectly good solution to me. So I declare that the chair and vice chair positions are vacant. Um, and we do have a motion before us that, um, if my clicker works. Post it over here. There, there is a motion before you that uh, Deanne Dale be appointed as interim chair for the purpose of conducting the elections for chair and vice chair. And I have a motion to that effect. So I'll, I see Ralph and Steve. All those in favor? Against? And that was a two year term, yeah. In that. Pretty good. <laughs> That's fair. So with that, I would like Deanne Dale to come forward and conduct our elections. Good morning, uh, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen. The election of the chair and vice chair for the Kettle Creek Conservation Authority for 2020 will be conducted in accordance with the Conservation Authorities Act and the Conservation Authorities Administrative Regulations as follows. Scrutineers. The appointment of one or more scrutineer is required for the purpose of counting ballots should an election be required. All ballots will be destroyed by the scrutineers afterwards. And I have a recommendation in front of me that Tom Marks act as scrutineer and that the ballots be destroyed after the election. Can I have a mover and a seconder for this motion? Move. Oh, I'm going to ask everyone if you wouldn't mind, please turn your name cards to me. So I, okay, Allison and seconded by Joe. Thank you. All those in favor? And the motion is carried. Now for the election procedures. The election shall be conducted in the following order. It will be the election of the chair, who shall be a member of the authority, followed by the election of the vice chair, who shall also be a member of the authority. I will ask for nominations to each position. Only current members of the authority who are present may vote. Nominations shall be called three times and will only require a mover. The closing of nominations shall require both a mover and a seconder. Each member nominated shall be asked to accept the nomination. The member must be present to accept the nomination unless the member has advised the secretary treasurer in writing or by email in advance of the election of their willingness to accept that nomination. If there is only one nominee, the individual shall be declared into the position by acclamation. If there is more than one nominee, an election will occur. Each nominee shall be permitted not more than three minutes to speak for the office in the order of the, al er, in the, order of the alphabetical listing by surnames. Upon the acceptance of nominees to stand for election to the position of office, ballots shall be distributed to the members by the scrutineer for the purpose of election, and I will ask members to write the name of one individual only on the ballot. The scrutineer <coughs> shall collect the ballots leave the meeting to count the ballots and return and advise the acting chair who was elected with more than 50% of the vote. A majority vote shall be required for election. If there are more than two nominees, 
and upon the first vote, no nominee receives the majority required for election, the name of the person with the least number of votes shall be removed from further consideration from the office, and new ballots shall be distributed. In the case of a vote where no nominee receives the majority required for election, and where two or more nominees are tied with the least number of votes, a special vote shall be taken to decide which one of such tied nominees' names shall be dropped from the list of names to be voted on in the next vote. Should there be a tie vote between two remaining candidates, a new ballot shall be distributed and a second vote held. Should there still be a tie after the second ballot, a third vote shall be held. Should there be a tie after the third vote, the election of the office shall be decided by lot drawn by the acting chair. If the members understand the procedures, we will begin with the election of the chair. I would now call for nominations for the position of chair for the Kettle Creek Conservation Authority for 2020. And I only require a member. Ralph? I would appoint uh, Stephen Harvey. Okay, Stephen Harvey. I'll call a second time for nominations for the position of chair. And I will call for a third and final time for the nomination for the position of chair. Okay, in this case, I will uh, ask Stephen, are you prepared to fulfill the role as chair of the three? Yes. Then at this point, being there only one candidate, I will announce that Stephen is the chair as a, as a claim uh, through this process. And I guess Stephen, if you still wish to, <laughs> to uh, make a comment, call on. <laughs> I, no, I just, I, I make myself very clear all the time the fact that the Kettle Creek team is just a top team. I, I'm very, very happy to uh, play my small role in that team. I would request a motion then to close nominations for chair. Moved by Allison. Seconded by Grant. All in favor? And that motion is carried. Thank you. I will now ask for nominees for the position of vice chair. Uh, Bill, I'd like to nominate Grant Jones. Grant Jones. I will call for a second nomination for the position of vice chair. Calling a third and final time for the position of vice chair. Seeing none, Grant, are you prepared to fill that position? I will. Then, based on there being one candidate and you are claimed as the vice chair for the Conservation Authority, I would move for a motion to uh, close nominations for vice chair. Uh, Dennis. And second by Dominique. All in favor? And that motion is carried. I believe we have our chair and vice chair, and that concludes my responsibility as the election chair. I will now turn the chair. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, first of all, um, uh, thank you very much for your vote of confidence. We're looking forward to the next year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, we are going to move into closed session, first thing, because of the fact that we have Mr. Edwards here. And I, I trust that it will be a relatively short closed session. But we will uh, we will determine that as time goes. Thank you very much, Mr. Marks. So I need a motion to move. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Before we do that, oh, community, you community interest. For community interest. So are there any folks declaring a pecuniary interest today? None. Now a motion to move into the session. Allison, seconded by Dennis. All in favor? Thank you. Carried. So we're back into open session. Does anyone need a break at all, or are we good? Okay. So, going back to our 
open session agenda. Um, we are at the year 2020 administrative approvals. Oh yeah, we need to make a motion to coming out of closed as far as uh, what we staff is to proceed as directed. Can we just go through the order of the of the agenda, Mr. Chair? So the December 18th, 2019 closed session minutes. Can we have a motion for that? Motion for the closed session minutes. Bill and Ralph, all in favor? Carried. Okay. The next one I close my agenda here. Here we go. There's um, a legal matter. We did, sorry, legal services we addressed first. Um, and I don't think there's any um, motion that's required now that will come up when you appoint your legal counsel for 2020. Okay. Um, B, legal matter litigation or potential litigation. Joe? Proceed as directed. Okay, so staff should proceed as directed. Yep. Uh, mover, seconder. Joe and Ralph, all in favor? Thank you. And then the property matter. For staff to proceed as directed and report back to the board on progress. Okay. Motion, Bill, seconder, Grant, all in favor? Thank you. Okay, so that looks happy. Okay. Okay, now, so we've done our elections. We're now in administrative approvals for year 2020 committee appointments. Mr. Chair, the first one is your executive committee. Uh, so three positions are ex officio. The chair, vice chair, and past chair uh, are on that committee by virtue of their position. And then we need two other members to sit on that, um, that committee. Okay, so that means myself, Grant, and Bill. We need two more people to, to sit on the executive committee. Do we have any nominations? Who, who was on the board? Who was on last year? That's why I to suggest that we keep the same people on it. We can do that. We can do that. Okay. But <laughs> well, we should probably know who those people are. We should probably know who those people are. <laughs> <laughs> I think Alex would want to see it. Yeah. And I think Joe was in detail. Joe. Did we have so, to be no. Motion yes. okay. So I would be on the board. Yeah. <laughs> so, so do we need a motion for each one of these? No, we just need a motion that Allison and Joe um, be appointed to the executive committee. Okay. And then Conservation Ontario. Sorry, can I have a motion no. that Allison and Joe be appointed to the executive Motion. Okay, motion. Dennis oh, yeah. and Dominique, all in favor? Oh, oh, thank, thank you. you. Okay, Conservation Ontario. Uh, Conservation Ontario, again, um, the motion, you can get it up here on the screen. Um, whoops, there. Um, so that the, the chair be appointed as the voting delegate to Conservation Ontario, that the general manager be appointed the alternate voting delegate, and last year it was Dennis Kravitz be appointed as the second alternate. <laughs> <laughs> I think an excellent job was done. Thank you. Yeah. So I would nominate it again. Yeah. Okay. Motion. We have Dennis, Allison, Ralph. All in favor? Thank you. Okay. Um, Lake Erie Regional Source Protection. Okay. Yep. The standing motion is the chair and general manager be appointed to that. So I'm just asking for that motion again this year. Mover. Joe. Seconder. Grant. All in favor? Thank you. And Western Fair Association. And the Western Fair Association, we decided last year that Allison Warbuck would be our representative and that we only needed one. And I would say that that's a fair assessment again this year. Okay. Did you have fun? Oh, I, I, I'm on there already. Yeah, that was on so there for perfect. you. Perfect. Okay. 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 <laughs> Motion to keep Allison on. Dennis and Bill. All in favor? Thank you. Okay. Whoosh. Hmm. The 2020 signing officer. Again, Mr. Chair, standing motion uh, that the chair or vice chair and one of the general manager, secretary, treasurer, assistant manager, supervisor, planning, conservation area be our signing officers for 2020. Okay. Any suggestions? Good. Motion for that? Grant and Bill, all in favor? Thank you. Carried. Borrowing maximum. 
Gorian maximum be $200,000, and further that signing officers be authorized to execute the necessary documents in that regard. Okay, motion. Ralph and Allison, all in favor? Thank you. Auditor. And that the firm of Grant Scott ends be appointed auditors for the Cattle Creek Conservation Authority for 2020. Okay. Bill? Motion to approve. Motion to approve, okay. Seconder? Joe? All in favor? Thank you. Carried. And appointment of solicitor. Mr. Chair, um, the motion would be uh, that Grant Inglis and Trudy Mott be appointed solicitor for the Cattle Creek Conservation Authority for 2020. Okay, so that follows up on me. A motion, Dennis and Grant, all in favor? Thank you, Carrie. And the meeting dates are already approved. Yes, and those are on the on the website. Okay, the December 18th full authority meeting minutes. Comments, questions, follow-ups, corrections. Seeing none, motion to move. Bill? Yep. Seconded by Grant. All in favor? Thank you. January media report. Mr. Chair, the, um, the um, invites for the annual general meeting have uh, went out, and our guest speaker this year will be uh, Peter Zuzik. Uh, the topic will be studying the Lake Erie shoreline and a changing climate. So Mr. Zuzik has been integral in doing a climate change and shoreline um, study down in Chad Kent and members have expressed a uh, desire to, to hear him. Uh, he's agreed to come out to that meeting. So a great opportunity to hear him speak. Lots of great information and encourage um, any member of your municipal councils to come out and, and hear that presentation as well. Um, that meeting is scheduled uh, in your planners for February 19th, and it will be at the public library. Start time is 9.30. Okay. Um, other things uh, going on media related, we have a public information session that uh, Jennifer and Marianne have been working on in cooperation with the Municipality of Central Elgin and Southwestern Public Health. Uh, specifically pertaining to Port Stanley and preparing that community for uh, any likelihood of, of flooding. And so a great information session, if you can come out, uh, you're more than welcome to attend that on January 29th at 7 p.m. at the Port Stanley Arena. And otherwise, if anyone else had any other questions, there was lots of um, good uh, media uh, over the past month and um, strong support from, from Temp Center in terms of the CA, which was uh, nice to see and encouraging. So mm -hmm. lots of great information there. Any other items? We saw you on TV. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. It's did always nice to get that press. She did a great job. She did a great job. That's right. She really did. It was nice. So uh, were there any other comments at all, folks? Okay. Seeing none. Motion to accept for information. Dennis and Bill, all in favor? Thank you. Okay. Watershed conditions. Mr. Chair, Jen took an opportune time to take uh, some extended time off um, over the holidays and left us with a significant weather event to handle <laughs> on our own. Hence my appearance on TV and not Jen's. Um, but water, all in all, the uh, watershed handled uh, that dumping of rain uh, fairly well. Um, the, our system is basically set up for that kind of uh, flushing event. Uh, we were concerned uh, the one evening, I think it was the Saturday evening, about um, the wind uprush down in port. Uh, just because of the, the amount of rain uh, flushing through the system and then the approaching winds. Um, but we have fared well all throughout the summer, really, uh, compared to other shoreline areas. Uh, and it happened again that night that the Port Stanley kind of cove area, uh, the winds kind of were coming from the south-southwest, looked like they were going to hit that shoreline head-on. Um, then it, as the hours approached, kind of veered out, um, and instead the, the long point again took the brunt of those uh, south-south winds. 
Um, so we can continue to see, I wouldn't necessarily call it wave uprush, um, but de definitely um, waves are lapping. You can see in the picture here, if you can look at that inner harbor, um, the water levels are so high down in Port Stanley that really any amount of wind moving in that area, it's lapping up on, on those uh, boardwalks along the inner harbor. So that'll be something um, that, again, we've been, been notifying people throughout um, the summer months and now into the winter. Uh, that, that remains a concern with those south-southwest winds. Uh, but all in all, uh, we just had the traditional kind of nuisance flooding in our traditional plain, uh, plain areas. So did Jen know you her crystal ball? No, she didn't. Jen? <laughs> well, my vision was compromised at the time. So I was <laughs> crystal ball. As you can see, everything is good now. But I, I don't, I mean, they're, they're saying that uh, right now, because of all that rain that we got, the water levels, nice thing about Lake Ontario and Lake Erie is that uh, they tend to remain more stable over the long term. So we'll just see a little bit of higher water for a while, and it'll slowly decline again. But, I mean, we have spring, spring approaching, so. But it seems to go up fast and go down slow. Mm -hmm. And that's so that's it's just the, yeah. building on because Lake Erie doesn't have um, a controlled outlet, right? So it takes longer for water to get. Right. That looks like a current condo where the, <laughs> the creek where the wind's blowing in, and it's a lot rougher than that normally does. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. We take a, a motion to receive this for information. Allison and Ralph, all in favor? Thank you. Okay. Notice the meeting for conservation authority levy. Mr. Chair, this is uh, required of us to provide that notice to your member municipalities and for AGM coming up, and we would like to know that will be uh, considered at that meeting. You should see this uh, letter in uh, your council packages coming up. Uh, but again, it's just a, a traditional notice of that to member municipalities that it's coming. Okay. Motion to receive. Bill, seconded by Dennis. All in favor? Thank you. Correspondence. Mr. Chair, I don't have anything to add to the correspondence today other than um, members, uh, if they're interested in attending the Lower Thames Valley Conservation Authority meeting, uh, it's coming up on February 20th. Um, if you're interested in attending, you can RSVP yourself or let me know and I can RSVP for you. There will be a number of meetings coming up that week. Um, I will do some research this week and find out uh, when the other neighboring CAs are holding those meetings and circulate those dates to you as well. Okay. Excellent. Otherwise, just a motion to receive. Motion to receive correspondence. Our mover, Ralph, seconder, Grant, all in favor. Thank you, Carrie. Okay. Uh, statement of revenues and expenses. Mr. Chair, these are drafts. These are unaudited. Um, um, statements of revenues and expenses as of December 31st, 2019. Uh, Kathleen was unable to attend today, but there, there are some, uh, we did circulate out a very proposed draft in terms of what we were looking at for our reserves. Um, that, there will be changes uh, to that based on an error that I've um, identified, but we will bring an updated report on how the reserves are looking at their year February 9th meeting. But the statements that you have uh, should be uh, pretty good. I think there's only one correcting entry that's probably going to add about $1,000 uh, to the bottom line. Um, and I'm certainly open to take questions from those from the statements that were put out in advance. Um, but overall, it's about a $30,000 positive year-end position. Um, and that's really coming out of the uh, revenue that was generated at Lake Whitaker. They were $51,000. Uh, Any comments, questions? Dominique. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So just an observation, a, a quick glance that I had at the staff training line. And um, so if I, this was, this is unaudited <laughs> comment, yeah. uh, but just a quick glance. I think it shows that out eight out of the 10 departments were underspent based on um, what was initially budgeted. Mm -hmm. So it's just a, I just want to flag that because um, Two things. We so staff training is extremely important for staff retention and engagement. So I think that's not news. And, and in all surveys, 
staff training rates higher even than salary as a you know a motivation to stay within an organization. So I know we spend a lot of time trying to stay competitive with salaries, but I just want to make sure that um, we don't not do uh, staff training. And uh, the other risk is that there's this is an old trick in the book um, that organizations are accused of using staff training, lines of staff training, communications, printing as padding, that because it's an easy thing to, to move money away from and then so all of a sudden you have this this money to cover overages in another area. So so there's a, a long-term risk because then in a future budget, as a board, if we see a trend of five years of underspending in staff training, then we just take it out. So you can't even have it as an overage protection. And so, so I see the two potential risks. I would say there's always things that staff can be learning and workshops they can be attending. And if it was budgeted for, then we'll make sure that we follow through on that. Comments? Well, Mr. Chair, first of all, I'd um, like to say I appreciate Dominique's uh, support of staff training. It's not something that, um, you know, there's peaks and flows, and it depends who's around the board tables to whether or not they necessarily support staff training. Um, and so I think you'll see that the staff training line items are pretty small in terms of overall budget, and that's been reflective of historical um, support of staff training, I would say. Um, I think the underages that you're seeing this year are um, if there's that was one of the things we identified early on as a staff in terms of a cost saving measure when we were of our uh, funding cut as well as our campgrounds uh, potential loss of revenue immediately then we really look at our staff training to say um, that's an easy way to uh, control spend. That's the kind of the first go-to to control spending, right? Um, but certainly with Dominic's support, and I think uh, it was one topic that was brought up even in my performance mm -hmm. appraisal, um, was to not uh, push staff, staff training and, and that um, self-pursuit of goals uh, to the side to necessarily save budget for always be looking at that state budget. So I appreciate those comments and we'll certainly look at that as a as a staff moving forward as well. Because that's the classic of you know professional development um, in the field. We staff the staff training line is always the first one to go because it's an easy one. But I can't emphasize enough just how not strategic that is. Um, because it does have an impact on staff more so than salary. So not go as far as saying cut salaries before we <laughs> cut staff training, but just be very, very careful. It looks easy, but it has an impact. Thank you for recognizing that. Thanks, Any other comments at all? Thanks. A motion to receive the financial reports. Bill and Ralph, all in favor? Thank you. Carried. Uh, new business, January planning and regulations activity. Joe? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, minor activity over the holidays, as it usually is. There was a couple to report there, but I did want to just provide an update on the concerns that were expressed at the December meeting relative to a zoning OP application in Port Stanley. Uh, regarding this figure that was looked at, and staff identified concerns with the proposed two uh, eastern lots. Um, there was a subsequent pre-consultation meeting with staff, municipal staff, as well as the, consult, the planning consultant for the applicant. And as you can see by the email correspondence <coughs> I provided in the advance, that meeting resulted in them no longer pursuing the two lots of concern, and they're only pursuing the, the one in the west. So I just wanted to let the board know that at this point it appears those concerns have been resolved and they're moving forward uh, with just the one lot that was supported. And that, that's all I have to That's all. Okay. Can we get a motion to receive that? Moved by Allison, second by Joe. All in favor? Thank you, Gary. That looks like that's it. Next meeting, February 12th, at 10 o'clock here. <coughs> You're going to run things that day? Okay. That February 12th meeting, the auditor will be here and will give you um, his preliminary findings. And so that really is kind of your last look at the statements from last year before we go into that year. Or again, he'll check.
Any other, anything you want for the good of the cause? No. Thank you very much. Just under yeah. two hours. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.